John not dead, him not dead, him live on On and on and on and on Yo, John not dead, him not dead, him live on In the heart of man John not dead, him not dead, him live on On and on and on and on Yo, John not dead, him not dead, him live on Peace, this your host, Eli Shalom, and this is a Cosmon teaching to the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible Owaspi. And this is part two of the Cosmogony and Prophecy series. And the name of this series, part two, is called The Nature of Comets and How They Are Made. As I stated in the first series, that vortexian currents are responsible for making comets, sun, planets, moons, and stars. So once a vortex gathers in a sufficient amount of minerals and gas form towards the center of the vortex. And as these minerals begin to condense, they begin to produce heat, warmth, and then light or fire. It is when the vortex reaches this point that it is called a comet. So the first manifested body created by a vortex is a comet before it becomes a planet as described in the book of Cosmogony and Prophecy, chapter 2, verse 5 through 12, where it states, verse 5, In the case of a vortex in Etheria, that is after the manner of a whirlwind on earth, the corporeal solutions are propelled toward the center thereof in great density, verse 6, when it is sufficiently dense to manifest light and shadow, it is called a comet or nebula. When still more dense, it is a planet. So here this verse gives the order of how a vortex, once condensed, producing light, heat, and shadow, becomes a comet before becoming a planet. So all planetary bodies were comets at one time in their growth process. Yeah, planets go through a growth process like everything else. That is physical. It just didn't pop up and there's the planet. No, it grew into what it is. Verse 7. When as a comet or nebula, the M vortex, which is the negative force of the vortex, hath not attained an orbit of its own, it is carried in the currents of the master vortex. The master vortex is the sun's vortex. Because all planetary bodies are subjected to the sun's vortex. Which currents are elliptic? parabolic and hyperbolic hence the so-called eccentric travel of comets so here the term m vortex is the name of the negative force of the vortex which currents flow in the north and south direction so this is what we see most of the time when we see a comet it is traveling with the general currents of the master vortex which is the sun's vortex before it has power to receive its own orbit. And when the comet receives its own orbit is when the vortex is strong enough to be independent and sustain itself. Verse 8. At this age of the comet, it showeth nearly the configuration of its own vortex, its tail being the M vortex, the negative force. If it appear to the east of the sun, its tail turneth eastward. If west of the sun, it turneth westward. Verse 9. Two directions of power are thus manifested, and also two powers. First, that the vortex of the sun hath power from the east to west, and from the west to east, to which the comet is subjected. Second, that the comet hath a vortex of its own, which is sufficient under the circumstances to maintain the general form of the comet. The ordinary comet hath its tail away from the sun, but some comets have two tails, one toward the sun and one away. In the case of Baila's comet in the year 4 BK, BK meaning before Cosmon, which would be 1846 AD, which was broken while the observer was looking on, is sufficient evidence of the sub-power of the comet's vortex. So here this verse explains the two powers of the vortex. The first being the sun's vortex to carry the comet, and the second power is the comet's vortex to maintain its own formation. So here it's showing you basically how the vortex 
is the foundation for any corporeal body, any planetary body, sun, moon, stars, or planets. Verse 10. Interior nebula is generally described as comets, while exterior nebula is usually called nebula. Nevertheless, all such solutions of corpor are of like nature, being as the beginning or as the incomplete condensation of a planet. So here it describes how comets, when fully developed, become planets. So your comets are your precursors before planets are actually developed. It's like the sperm cell of the planet. Verse 11, they do not all, nor half of them, ripen into planets, but their vortices are often broken, and they return again into sublimated solutions and are lost to mortal sight. So this verse shows how comets can become planets if their vortexian power is strong enough, and if not strong enough, it'll return to its essence, which is the gas state, the first cause which is unseen to mortal sight, but it still exists. Verse 12. But nowhere in Etheria is there a solution of corpor sufficient to put itself in motion, nor sufficient to condense itself, nor to provide the road of its travel. But its road of travel showeth the direction of the lines of the sun's vortex, except in such cases when a comet's vortex cometh within the vortex of another planet's vortex, of greater power than its own. So here this verse shows how corpora, which is anything physical, has no power of its own to move. The only way anything physical can be moved or exist is by the vortexian currents which produced it. Or if a planetary body comes in contact with another planetary body with a stronger vortexian current, it can be moved and subjected to that planetary's vortexian current as well. So the root cause of planets, sun, moon, and stars, comets, is the vortexian current, the unseen but seen power. And with that, I'd like to say peace and blessings and catch you on part three called How Our Solar System Was Created Based Off of Vortexian Current. Shalom. In the art of man, John no dead, him no dead, him live on, on and on and on and on. Yeah, John no dead, him no dead, him live on.